Hey YouTube, what's good? It's your boy the American African. And today's day 29 of a 30-day water fast. Day 29, day 29, you know. Recap of day 28. Um I chilled, you know what I'm saying? I, I finally watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I actually watched it three times. I know that sounds crazy. I didn't like just sit there and watch the whole thing beginning and end three times. It was a lot of trying. Trying to understand certain pieces, so I kept going through it and shit. But I enjoyed the movie, you know what I mean? Uh, other than that, been sleeping a lot. Went for a drive this morning. Feeling really good, you know? I cramped up a little bit, so I kind of figured it out. That the reason I'm, I think I'm, cr I'm cramping up is too much potassium. Before, I was thinking maybe it's too little potassium. But the reason I know it's too much potassium is that... My cramping started when I started taking powder form of potassium citrate, right? Normally, I take, like, way back, I used to take the pills. And the pills have very little amount of potassium. And it would be, like, daily value 2%. So, I used to be like, what? 2%? Why would I take 2%? But now I understand it. You don't really need that much potassium. You know, that 2% that it says, I don't, I don't know... I don't I don't really get all those percentages and shit, but I just know that I definitely don't need 100% or 200 or 300%, you know what I mean? No matter how much I pee. So I think I was actually cramping it up due to too much potassium. It'll take me like 30 days to really figure it out, but that's my theory. And one of the reasons that's my theory is that even when I was eating for the past six months before I started this water fast, I used to have that same cramping, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I remember I was still trying to take potassium thinking... Oh, I have a potassium deficiency. So my theory is that I had hyperkalemia, too much potassium in me. And I figured it out yesterday because yesterday when I was at work, I took snake juice and I started to feel the cramping again a few hours later. So now I decided I'm going to start taking on my future fast, normal old school snake juice that I used to make. Just water. Salt and pink Himalayan salt. I'm a believer again. Water, pink Himalayan salt, apple cider vinegar. That's it. You know, that's all. That's all. That's all I'll need. If I ever feel like I need magnesium, I'll make, you know, a small little cup, add some magnesium citrate powder in there, drink that. And that's really if I can't sleep. And potassium... I'm going to go back and buy the pills, the 2% pills. I will never take the powder again unless I find out that I'm wrong somehow. But I, I, I think I I think I think pretty much finally figured it out. So, yeah, today been a real chill, quiet day. Man, I took a nice bubble bath today. I took a nice bubble I haven't taken a bubble bath in a long time, you know what I'm saying? Took a nice bubble bath. Listen to the new Babyface Ray album. Fuck with that joint. That one was nice, you know, smooth, man. As I said, as I get older, I still listen to hip hop, but I like the smooth shit, you know. I like the smooth shit, you know. So I got 48 hours left, you know what I mean? 46 hours. You know, I made this coffee, but I kind of figured something out. I figured out that, um, Caffeine, I'm thinking it's the caffeine. I don't think it's the black bean coffee. I, I, caffeine gives me acid reflux. The only reason I'm kind of on the edge is like, I haven't drank soda in such a long time, so I can't really say. But I doubt that if I drank soda, which has caffeine, right, that I would have acid reflux. So I'm drinking pure black coffee, nothing in it, and I'm getting acid reflux. And I'm 100% sure it's coming from the coffee. So, I read some things about it that there's certain coffees you can buy that are less likely to give you acid reflux. And I, I, I read so many things about it, but I think I'm just going to go back to caffeine-free tea. You know, caffeine-free, probably black tea for my future fast. If I do want to sip on something. Or even the other tea that I was drinking before. I just, I just wasn't sure if that tea was having any effects on my energy. I kind of, you know, I might have that tea again tonight. The only funny thing about that tea, okay, the only funny thing or questionable thing about it is I don't know what it is because the tea 
comes in a bag with no label. Now, it came in a box, but I trashed the box. I discarded it. So there's nothing, there's literally nothing on it to tell you what it is. The tea bags are also plain Jane. So I actually don't know what tea it is. <laughs> if I go in a grocery store, I think I would know what it is. And I could probably find the receipt, you know, like an online copy of the receipt. I have this tea, but this tea has um like a lemon ginger um kind of flavor in it, and that ginger caused some issues before, so that's why I don't drink this while I'm fasting. But I do like celestial tea. It's also caffeine free, but the ginger causes problems while I'm fasting. So yeah, today been a chill day. Just been chilling, yo. You know, the past this weekend especially, I've been watching a lot of cooking videos. You know. A lot of Japanese food. I'm starting to miss sushi and ramen. It's so weird. Like, I love Japanese culture so much. You know, the tourist version of it, right? The part that I know, that I see. Not, It's not like I've ever been there or anything. I don't know what it's like for the locals in that real, real culture. But you know what I'm saying? I like Japanese vehicles, you know what I'm saying? From Honda, Mazda, Toyota, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I like anime. I like their street fashion, you know, Bape and all that. Um, almost everything. Why did I bring this up? Man, that shit just slipped my mind. That shit slipped my mind. Forgive me. But <sighs> I got 48 hours left. 48 hours left. I'm still trying to figure out why I brought up Japan. <laughs> I got 48 hours left and... Um, Oh, the food. Yeah, I'm craving Japanese food. But it's not like I really want to like overeat it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I eat ramen, I eat one ramen bowl. I don't be like, oh, I want another one. When I eat sushi, even if I order a large order of sushi, I'll be good for the day. Like, you know what I'm saying? I probably will get sushi if I break my fast. Um, but the funniest thing is that that's the only thing that has now made me feel like, yeah, I'm just going to do 30 days is that I started watching this cooking shit. I won't say that I really want to cook though, but I want to eat some good cooked food. Is sushi considered cooked food? Well, I, and I don't even really want sushi. I want like Ohagi, Oniri. I want to try some other ones that I never tried before. You know what I'm saying? Even when it comes to sushi, I usually eat sashimi or nigiri. But yeah, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, Mo. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's a bittersweet feeling getting towards the end of this fast. It's a bittersweet feeling like... It's weird, like, I really like fasting. It's really, like, a sweet space for me because it's, like, all I'm focused on is getting better, you know? When you're fasting, that's the only thing you're focused on. You're not focused on anything but just being better. And the longer you fast, it's not even about the length, though, but each day it's, like, you know you did the best you could the previous day. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I be feeling. And I'm happy about it because... That means I'll be very motivated to start the next one, which is key to the water fasting gauntlet, you know? I got to feel motivated to start the next one to the point where even if I plan a three-day break, I only do one day. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's supposed to be for me, you know? I've been buying cologne lately, you know? I just bought this cologne. That's why I sell cologne. I'm loving it. I bought this, I bought Savage, you know, some Dior cologne. That one, I like it, but this one I really like, you know what I'm saying? So, <sighs> I've been put, trying on some clothes that I bought, you know what I'm saying? Some, some 3X, it's still a tight fit, you know what I'm saying? Still a tight fit, still don't button up at the bottom, you know? My stomach's still really large. Still got some reducing to do. And one thing I've always said is that if you're doing any sort of weight loss, it takes three weeks before you start seeing the results. 
and then it just keeps incrementing to the point where even if I started eating today, I would still be, my body would still be reducing. You know what I'm saying? It takes some time for the body to catch up. So even if you drop 20 pounds, you might not see it immediately, depending on how much you weigh, of course, right? If you're 200 pounds, you lose 20 pounds. You're going to see that. If you're 400 pounds, you lose 20 pounds. You might not see that. Yeah, it's relative, you know, 10% versus 5%. Um, but I'm sure I've reduced a lot of body fat, which is, you know, the goal. To reduce body fat, clear my mind, focus, get back on track. Year five of my weight loss journey. I'm feeling good about it, you know. I'm feeling good about it. The sky's the limit. And the most important thing is my refeed. Pay attention to how my stomach feel. When I get energy, start to introduce exercise. On my next water fast, I'm going to try my best to exercise. But um, reducing the weight and completing the fast is more important than exercising. I might not like the way I look physically due to the lack of exercise, but it's one step at a time, you know? Sometimes you can't do everything at once. So just listening to my body is very important. It'll tell me a lot about how I... How, what I need to do, you know. As I said at the beginning of this water fast, I didn't really know that I could do 30 days. But I planned for it. I wrote it out. I felt like it was what I needed. And I executed. And even when push came to shove and I felt like, man, it's always next year. I said, no. <laughs> we wrote this shit down and we stick it to it. You know, that day seven, day ten stretch. You know, I passed through it. And completing 30 days by God's grace. You know, I'm not there yet, though, but I'm close. Completing 30 days, it'd be nice, man. And if I push towards 40, it'd be nice, too. But the way I'm thinking about food, the event that's happening next week with my work company, and the, and then the way that the, the timing is so perfect, and on this fast, I feel like I've had God's grace, just like how I worked this weekend, and I didn't have to do that much physical work. Everything is lining up for me, you know. Even when I was on call, it was like the final day of on call. I experienced some shit, but it wasn't anything that physically drained me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, keep calm and keto on. This is like one of the first long water fasts I'm in, and I don't, I don't feel ketosis. I felt it for like one or two days. I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel keto breath. I don't, I don't smell it in my pee. Obviously, I'm in ketosis, right? I'm I'm definitely getting energy from my stored body fat. But I think when I used to water fast, because I used to exercise, I was born, burning a lot more energy. Therefore, I was really tapping in, you know? That's why I was really feeling it. But I don't... Obviously, again, obviously, I'm in ketosis, but <laughs> there's no sign of it that's apparent to me. It's only when I think about it that, well, if you're not taking in carbohydrates at all, you know, you're zero carb, you're definitely in ketosis after a certain amount of time. So ketosis, man, I've used ketosis to lose all my weight. You know, one of the reasons why I always try and fast longer than three days is that it takes like three days to get into ketosis. So once you pass three days, for the, I'm talking about for the average person, especially overweight or bigger. Once you pass three days, no carb or very low carb, depending on the person, that's when you enter ketosis. And that's when you start burning fat for energy and you start to tap into your fat stores, you know. So imagine for at least for 20, let's, let's say at least for 25 days, I've been in ketosis, hardcore. And, you know, one of the things I thought about, I, I doubt that I'm going to do it, is doing carnivore in between fasts. But I doubt I'm going to do it, you know. Taking in some carbohydrates will feel good, especially if I want to do exercise and all that. So I'm going to take in my carbs probably by way of rice and vegetables. I think I'm going to eat clean. I definitely don't foresee me eating junk food. Could it happen? Anything could happen, but... I don't I don't see why I would eat junk food. Like I had it this year. Like I had so much junk food this year before I started fasting. 
I don't crave it. I, I'm I'm craving clean foods. I'm clean. I'm clean, I'm craving foods that are not product. You know, clean. I don't really like putting that sort of connotation on food though, but that's what they call it, clean. You know, the the rices, the vegetables, the fruit, the meats. You know what I'm saying? Just clean, even cheese. You know, but just clean, natural. Not a lot of processed food. I'm not saying that I will never again eat processed food or junk or anything, but one step at a time. That's where I'm at today, you know. So we're on day 29. I only got one video left. Maybe. Most likely. Day 30. You know, y'all catch me. Y'all get my final thoughts. As always, I record my refeed. My refeed is normally fish, avocado, and boiled eggs. I'm missing something. Oh, and nuts. Nuts. You know, um, macadamia nuts. I really love macadamia nuts. My favorite nuts is pistachio, but pistachio gives me hives. So I stopped taking pistachio. I used to eat so much pistachio in 2020. In 2021, I discovered it gave me hives. So I haven't had pistachio since. But I really love macadamia nuts, but they're so expensive, you know? I love walnuts too. Almonds are cool. The good thing about almonds is that unless they're salted, I don't really get addicted. But I could eat like a half a pound of nuts a day, like nothing. Expensive though, expensive habit. But I'd rather have nuts as my junk food versus chocolate and burger and fries and all that sort of stuff for now. So I, I might, I might indulge on some nuts during my. My break in between fast, I don't know. But definitely, you know, it's like automatic. Like right now, I'm not thinking about, let me go buy avocado in advance and fish or whatever. But once I get into that mode or it's refeed time, I'll just go out and buy it, you know? I'll just go out and buy it. By the way, a lot of people talk about bone broth. I used to call them the bone broth mafia. But I'm not beefing with bone broth mafia anymore. I always wonder. People always talk about bone broth. But if you go to the store and you buy bone broth, it's okay to like have things that's like chemical. You know, it's okay. You know, I'm not judging anyone. But like for me, if I was gonna eat bone broth, I would make it myself. You know what I'm saying? I would literally cook a lot of meat, take that. That broth and drink that. That's what I would do. So then, if that's the case for me, I would have to cook meat in the first place. So for me, it's like, why not just eat the meat, the, the, eat the bone marrow, which is arguably one of the best parts of the meat. <laughs> and like, just, just get down like that. If I was going to do it, if that's how I was going to break my fast, that's how I would do it. I probably wouldn't eat like hard meat though, you know, but like cow leg and pomo and stuff you know but anyways long story short I'm, I'm i'm hungry now okay i've been watching a lot of food content and i'm hungry i don't know if the food content is making me hungry or i'm just finally hungry for the first time during this water fast but either way i'm towards the end i can see the finish line but i'm not celebrating early like comment subscribe i see you on day 30